So the President and the Prime Minister arrive once again at the center of the Champs-Élysées and will dismount to approach the tomb of the unknown warrior. In 1944 was the last time the French president invited a prime minister of the United Kingdom to do this. That was Winston Churchill, and it was just after the Allied armies had pushed Nazi Germany out of most of France. And it was to mark, again, a great moment of returning peace to Europe. And this year is the 120th anniversary of the Entente Cordiale between the United Kingdom and France, an important alliance which has held the two nations firmly side by side facing the challenges of the world. And now, the laying of wreaths and the respect to the unknown warrior. together to recognize the Entente Cordiale between the two nations and to honor the unknown warrior of France, the President and Prime Minister in silence. And then the Prime Minister will be introduced to those who are responsible for maintaining and protecting this eternal flame and memory by relighting the eternal flame. It is a great privilege accorded by the President of France to significant visitors, particularly heads of state and heads of government, to play that part in relighting this flame.
with the respect of the choir of the French Armed Forces singing the United Kingdom's national anthem and that of France, and with the President and Prime Minister getting the chance to meet those who are responsible for maintaining this extraordinary memorial. The respect and salute to the armistice here is done. And it is always special to be reminded of the eternal desire to recall and reflect upon those who lost their lives in the First World War. France, particularly at Verdun on the Western Front, lost so many of its number. There is an ossuary there where all the bones of those soldiers are held in one place and to which very often those who wish to understand the cost of war can visit and reflect for France upon what it lost between 1914 and 1918. Of course, this does reflect the 120th anniversary of the Entente Cordiale, which was promoted by King Edward VII when he went to Paris after the unpopularity of Britain across Europe during the Boer War. But he melted the hearts of Paris and it led to an agreement which maintained the peace of Europe and was the strength against the challenges that sought to take it away in two world wars. And we witnessed two heads of government who are today committed to maintaining peace in Europe in the strength that the NATO alliance can itself act in protection of that. <laughs>